bring the same level of gratification when you <coughs> stopped in between rounds? I mean, obviously, you, you put in some real good work there, but is it, is it yeah. a good feeling if you had, like, actually finished them? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think if, you know, to get a knockout or something like that is the ultimate feeling, but uh, it's gratification in a different way. You know, I mean, some of those shots, a lot of guys would have went down and stayed down on a couple of those shots. Like, my hand is 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 so sore, my knuckles. Uh, he took some hard shots, but, you know, uh, there's a gratification in the fact that, you know, I'm a dog, too. I'm never going away. None of these guys, like I said the other day to you, nobody shut me out. Nobody's, uh, you know, completely smoked me or anything like that on any of my losses. It's all close. I'm a dog. So, uh, you know, he got a knockdown, put me on my butt there, but all that did was piss me off. And I came back forward, and I think once he did that, he hit me with his best shot and then realized, man, this dude ain't playing. This, is, this kid is going to keep coming forward and be in my face. I don't want any more of that. I didn't sign up for that. I know you told me before the fight you really wanted that Donald Cerrone moment in the cage with your little yep. man. Uh, How did that feel to actually have that come to fruition? Uh, man, it's a dream come true, really, it is. You know, so, I mean, it's a different purpose now. It's a different sort of purpose with fighting. You know, before, it was anything I could do to avoid the real world for a little bit, fighting for myself and, and to be the best I could be. But now with the family uh, and for him, it's a, it's a different purpose. So uh, to be able, and you know, he's too young, he won't remember it, but he's gonna be in those picks. And uh, to be able to share this with him is, is so special, man, because, uh, you know, I've openly said it, but I kinda, I came out without, I came up with, without a dominant father figure. So I had to learn a lot on my own. So, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, being a dad is about showing him how to achieve goals and, and this is my platform to do that. You know, I'm not going to tell him how to do things. I'm going to show him. So when he looks back, he, he knows, hey, Pops, he set a goal. You know, he had a dream. He, he went up there and he put it all on the line for everybody to see. And this is how he got it. He didn't talk about it. He went out there and did it. So yeah, um, to, to show him, that's, that's the ultimate, you know, for me. How much of uh, that background and not having a, a father figure is behind you doing this as a career because a lot of people find guidance that way yeah I think it's a cliche story and you know I'm kind of jaded towards it because uh, you know a lot of media outlets and, and UFC and it's not your fault everybody wants to know the story behind the fighter and that's part of it people want to know you but you know I'm, I'm typical story troubled childhood no dominant father figure uh, a lot going on uh, you know so all that story is the same so now I feel like with my boy, I, I get another chance. But, um, you know, I tell people all the time, I get some funny looks, but fighting changed my life. Fighting people in this octagon changed my life for the better, man. Taught me a lot of lessons. Lessons learned through sport, but uh, a lot of lessons the hard way, uh, you know, literally and, and figuratively. So, um, you know, it's changed my life for the better. And, you know, I, I already can't thank this sport enough for, for what it's given me. Scott, you talked about... Um getting a top 15 fighter, do you have anybody in specific that you want to fight or just anybody top 15, top 10? Yeah. You know, I'd love to have the winner of Guida and Miller. I, I'm not sure where they're ranked, um, but I know they're both Hall of Famers. I think that's cool. You know what I mean? Like, give me one of those Hall of Famers. That'd be awesome. But if not, everybody's equally tough, man. It's like people pick and choose, but it don't matter. Everybody's a bad day. You know what I mean? It's so... Uh, I don't know if one fights either than the other in different ways. So, um, you know, I'd love to have the winner of those guys or a Hall of Famer, but, you know, I, I'm not the matchmaker. I don't know if I've ever gotten to choose a fight. So, <laughs> uh, you know, the old cliche, whoever, whoever they get. But, um, you know, I belong up there with those guys. I belong. I'm a super athlete. I'm, I'm kind of behind the curve. Uh, you know, because I played professional hockey, college baseball, I got started late. These guys are Division One wrestlers. They're uh, jiu-jitsu world champions. They're kickboxing world champions. I'm just a, I'm just a super athlete that decided one day to go to an MMA gym and and had a lot of fun. So, so I've spent my entire career just trying to catch up. You know what I mean? Trying to settle in in the octagon. I got in the UFC when I was seven and zero. That's 
It's nothing, man. I'm fighting on the... My last fight before the UFC was in a rodeo barn. We warmed up in the we warmed up in the petting zoo, man. That's no lie. It smelled like it smelled like cow manure in the in the. So, you know, I, I'm trying to catch up. But uh, with this fight, I needed this fight with this matchup. When I saw it come across, obviously I didn't pick it. I don't. I'm not Sean Shelby. When I saw this matchup, I'm like, you know what? This dude throws down. This is an opportunity right here. Um, so, you know, and when you're coming off a loss, you don't get to pick. So. Uh, you know, I need that bonus money, man. You guys, you know, now you see the baby boy. We got a house. You know, I need to put some bread on the table. I'm trying to set him up, so I need that money. Can we talk about the first round? Um, talk about his toughness. Uh, you yeah. had him on the ground early, yeah. and there was a couple submission attempts. Can you just talk about the ground uh, for those few minutes in the first round? <laughs> yeah, you know that ground, all, all the groundwork and the kind of clinching was just – uh, to to wear him down a little bit. I knew with every grappling exchange that his power meter was going to go down, down, down. And some of the submission attempts, um, you know, they were there. I squeezed for him, uh, and they were good, but he was just, uh, you know, he's strong. He's a big guy, too. Obviously, he missed weight. So the game plan was, hey, man, let's let's lean on him a little bit. Let's grapple if, if the opportunity arises. And he's going to burn two times more energy than you. Like, he's not ready for, for that sort of fight. Um, so, you know, I squeezed on a few of them. They weren't quite there. Um, but I knew that it was going to pay off for me near the end. And it did. It broke him. But uh, they were there, man. Uh, but, you know, it was just a penny in the bank for later in the fight. When you're putting this way, that, that told you something about it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think it always does. Um, you know, because... He tried hard. I had guys in the fitness gym at 6 a.m. working out, some of my training partners, and they said he was laying on the floor at 6 a.m. on the day of weigh-ins, like not making it. And then he didn't even weigh in until 10.45. And that's me already rehydrating for two hours. At this level, you need a 1% advantage. You know, any sort of advantage you can get. If I got two more hours to rehydrate than a guy, and he's depleted his body that much to make the weight, um, you know, I'm seeing it as an advantage. It's another penny in the bank for later. And you already fought twice in 2019. Yep. Uh, would you like to fight a third time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I tried to get on that Greenville card. That was, I don't know, a month and a half ago, two months. Um, I'm trying to ride it. Like I said, I got a, I got a new house. I got a baby boy. This is a different sort of purpose. Um, this is the, this is that dad life, man. This is a different sort of fight. You know what I mean? Like. I've been changing shit diapers, got shit on my hands, so uh, we're trying to do a little bit better, man. We're like I'm, I'm like, all right, if I'm gonna go through this, we we I need to set you up and and uh, but yeah, I feel healthy, like I feel good. Uh, I don't have a lot of mileage on my body, you know. I've had a couple hard fights, but you know, I'm I still feel great. You mentioned uh, you missed it on the Greenville card. Do you have a card in mind moving forward? No, I got to see what's out there. Um, I always love Vegas. I love Vegas. Uh, you know, I think we capitalized on a big opportunity tonight on ESPN. Uh, you know, I feel like I look good on TV. I feel like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, promotable, all that stuff. I feel like when, when I fight, you know what you're getting. Like, hey, you know, this dude's going to go out and, and take some risks. He's going to throw some wild shit, and he's going to try to bury guys, you know, so you can guarantee that there's uh, going to be some excitement in my fights. So uh, I think you don't always get that with every guy. So, um, you know, I got a little bit of stock, and so, uh, you know, we'll see. Let's go back to that moment. You said, like, when you first entered a, US, or entered a uh, MMA gym, did uh, you ever think, like, hey, I'm going to make it to the UFC when you first entered that gym? No, man. When I started, it's funny because my coach is right back here. When I first started uh, – I started doing jujitsu. I'm like, ah, I'm never gonna fight. You know, I'm just. I was doing the nine to five. I was doing a, a recruiting for electrical engineers. So I was sitting in this cubicle, uh, staring at a computer, talking on the phone to these foreign PhD grad engineers. It drove me crazy, man. So I took up jujitsu as an outlet. I had a friend, uh, Jarrett, at the time. So I started doing jujitsu. I'm like, I'm not gonna fight. I'm just here for, as another outlet to try and combat the rat race. And uh, a year later, I'm like. Eh, we'll try it. I won in 40 seconds, didn't get hit. Eh, we'll go till I lose. 
all of a sudden I'm in the UFC, you know, and I'm like, holy shit, these guys are good, man. This dude's a Division One wrestling champ. I'm just a kid from Tennessee, man, like out here hacking around. These dudes are the best in the world, so, um, you know, I'm up here hanging with the top 001% in the UFC, and, you know, I'm just out. I'm just here for a good time, not a long time. That's it. Quick question. Yeah. Bob tends to have his hands on his side. Was that part of the game plan, that straight right that you brought him with in the first that really got his Alongside? Yeah, he tends to have a little bit of an earmuff guard. Yeah. Is that part of the, the strategy where you're trying to go straight down the pipe with that right hand? Um, or is that just happening today? I don't think so. We knew that right hand would be there because he carries his lead hand a little low. Uh, but I started noticing right off the bat. So, so the plan was early to feign him and try and draw out, see what he's going to do. How's he going to react? So he was reacting a little differently than we planned for. Instead of, uh, instead of pulling back a lot, he was ducking forward. So that's when that uppercut came in. So I feinted him, uh, zipped that uppercut through there and s smoked him. Hit him hard, and that's when he kind of stumbled back. But I noticed he was doing that. So, I mean, I'm always going to land right hands. It don't matter. It doesn't matter if it's the boogeyman out there, man. The right hand's coming. I'm going to throw him until I drop. So, uh, you're getting hit with one if you fight me, I promise. With the nickname Hunt Sauce, do you get inundated with, like, people trying to give you hot sauce, trying to make you eat very spicy? Yeah. Hot sauce? Does that become annoying as hell? It looks like it's well, not something you love. Yeah. I got a lot of mileage on me in that sense. Uh, where when I was early on, yeah, you're gonna clarify that. <laughs> early, early on in my career, I did all the hot sauce challenges and, no. and all that. You know, like, oh, try these hottest wings, show up, and uh, but now it's like, man, I ain't doing that. I don't feel like having my stomach hurt for two days. Like I can still eat it all, but it's funny now. Like when I'm out at a restaurant, people are like, not using any hot sauce. And I'm like, hey, man, this is dessert. What are you talking about? <laughs> But, uh, you know, the nickname is true. I eat a lot of hot sauce. I eat it on everything. And, and you know, and like, like I told you guys, I'm a simple guy. Like, at first, I, I didn't want a nickname, you know. I'm not like a killer or axe murderer or a pit bull. I'm just a dude uh, from Tennessee. So uh, the hot sauce name is because I eat a lot of hot sauce, and I still do. Love it. No hot, spot, hot sauce sponsorship? We're working on it. I've done a spot for Cholula, but... Um, We'll see. Whoever's paying the most. But I, I'm, I may come out with my own hot sauce here soon. So, we'll see. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much.